Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's a Friday, Black Friday, November 29th. Hopefully you're not in the stores. I certainly am not. It's uh, noon here in the east, 9 o'clock on the west coast time. Let's talk weather. There's lots to talk about here. In this particular edition, we'll be talking about the recent rains in the eastern United States. We'll be talking about why November has been so darn cold if the Arctic Oscillation has been vastly positive, the NAO has been strongly positive, and the PNA has been negative. It makes no sense. It should be a blowtorch pattern. The pattern reloads with Arctic Blast number 5 coming at you, Mambo number 5, and uh, the Pacific Northwest first, and then... Uh, and moves to the eastern United States, and the potential ice storm down the road for the deep south of Tennessee Valley and the mid-Atlantic states, December 9th through 12th. So let's get started. This is a comparison of the rains before the big rains on November 26th, 27th, and afterwards. You can see the huge changes here. Um, look at these numbers. Let me just call you up here. You can see some areas were uh, the three inches below normal, two and a half, three inches below normal. Now look at the difference in the changes. One, one and a half inches below normal. So that's a big improvement. If we look at the rainfall, uh, percentages of normal. Some of these areas, look at the I-95 corridor here. Everybody from eastern Maine all the way down to North Carolina was 5 to 25, maybe 50 percent of normal rainfall. Now vastly different, 50, 75 percent, a lot better off. Some places 90 percent. So a big, huge change in the rainfall. Uh, in the last uh, couple of days with the storm. And temperatures, look at these temperatures, my God. And again, look how cold, especially the mountains. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it, that hasn't, it's actually gotten colder as we've gone further into November relative to normal. And that's just very impressive. So what's causing all this? Now, if you look at these conditions, you look at your indexes, a lot of forecasters do this, and that's all they do. They don't look at anything else, and what happens is they're getting burned. If you pick the positive arc oscillation like these folks did in Europe and the points, you're losing the ball game. You know, you don't need to look at the videotape, or as uh, Warner Wolf would say, you're losing. It's that simple. Uh, here's the Arctic Oscillation. It goes down to slightly negative, and it goes back up to positive. The NAO is neutral. The PNA is staying slightly new negative the whole way through. You look at all these indexes, you should be forecasting uh, a warm November. I mean, if you look at this for one second, you look at the Arctic Oscillation here, folks. I just got to point this out to you. This is November 1st. From November 1st to now or just about here, it's only been a slightly negative one time. And we're unbelievably cold. It's impressive. So what's going on here? This, the combination of the Western Pacific Oscillation being negative and the EPO negative in the jet stream pattern is establishing a sustained cold flow from Siberia over the North Pole into Canada. Thus, when the large cold highs are forming to coming south, they're much colder than what you normally see with a positive AO. And that's why those folks using the positive Arctic Oscillation are losing the ball game right now. The game, they haven't lost the winter yet, but right now they're in trouble. That's what I'm saying. All right? And if we look at the water temperatures in the Pacific, it's still there. If anything, if you look at the last, now this map here is from November 26. You can see the very warm water here, which is feeding the uh, negative EPO, which is feeding the Western Pacific Oscillation. But if you look at the last two weeks, the war temperatures there are actually increasing, not decreasing. So this pattern is not going anywhere at all. That's the whole point of trying to get across here. All right. Now, let's talk about what's going to happen in the future. Now, this comes back from November 27th. Uh, the map here, this is the European Ensemble way over here on the left, and then the GFS Ensemble service maps. And what's happening here is um, here's our southeast ridge. You see this? Now, look at these black lines. You're going to see all these black lines. I've highlighted these lines. They're going to shift so you can see the change. Here's a trough coming in this way. Here's our ridge, and the NAO is positive. Now, what happens, happens is that this is going to drive southward, south and eastward, and the front's going to stall up against the southeast ridge. And this is what the GFS was showing from the 27th. You can see a lot of ice here, the big Arctic highs in Iowa, driving the cold there southward, a lot of ice in the deep south, and snow in the Tennessee Valley into Virginia. That's what the models were showing. It got me concerned a couple of days ago back before Thanksgiving. This is the GFS ensemble. And again, we're just looking to get a general idea. We're not making a specific, a specific forecast. This is a snow and ice storm. This is a snow and ice storm of the Tennessee Valley deep south. This is a snow and ice storm. This is a snow and ice storm. Uh, this might be, this. if this feature comes up, we can't tell at this point. This is another one down in here. You can see that. So, And this is another one possibly here. That's a lot for out of 12 different ensembles. That's a significant percentage. This is valid for December uh, 8th and 9th. So 
just give you an idea. We're not trying to nail down the day, just let you know something might be coming down the pike. Now, this is the European Ensemble here for 312 hours, valid December uh, 10th. And we can see this a massive Arctic jet blasting southward. The polar vortex is coming south. The NAO has actually gone a little bit towards neutral here, which is interesting. And the southeast ridge, as you can see, has clearly weakened. Now, you remember these black lines I talked about? These things have now come southward. You see what's happened? And the southeast ridge is now going this way because the trough is getting deeper and it's coming southward. Now, obviously, there's going to be some sort of low pressure developing in this area right in here. We think, I think it's going to be developing right in this area in here the base of the trough. And because the flow is this way, the low is going to go this way. It's not going to Michigan. It's not going up here. It's going to go due east or east-northeast, depending on the overall pattern. Okay. So this is the European at uh, um, for, I believe this is, yeah, this is the, zero, the morning European here for Friday morning, and this is uh, day seven. And we can see our southeast ridge very nicely, very impressive, as you can see right here. Okay. Here's the trough coming this way. And the southeast ridge has to go up. And we're seeing a little bit of a negative NAO trying to develop here. And we had this is the one upper low, and there's the upper one forming in the southwest. And uh, this is the uh, surface map of what it looks like, you know, a large scale. And you can see, look at this massive cold air outbreak. Holy mackerel! There's the cold front here, warm air surging up this way. There's the high off the coast. But look at this, folks. Good googly moogly. Very impressive. Very, very impressive. And here's another one. This is now, I believe this is for uh, a close-up map of day seven. We can see the cold air. Look at this stuff in here. Minus 26 at 850. Woo, minus 28. There is the front, like the, oh, excuse me, like this. So I must learn to drink more heavily. There's the uh, high moving off the coast, and there's the Arctic air surging southward. Okay. And then uh, here is um, a day, let's see, this is uh, day eight. We can see the front very clearly like this. You can see it coming up this way. Okay, here's the high. You see it right there? So, again, and there's the high moving off the coast. Very warm here on December. Let me get my dates here set up again. This is for December 6th. Very warm for early December in Virginia and Boston and North Carolina and Georgia. So don't be surprised. I don't want to hear complaints about it. I'm telling you it's going to get very warm, so stop complaining. Okay. And then finally, this is the uh, European Ensemble here for December 6th. And, again, it clearly shows that the front is coming southward. You can see it very nicely right here. The front is going like this. Okay, there's the massive Arctic high. And look at these winds driving everything southward. Boom. Okay, and there's the high moving out to sea. No surprises so far. Now, this is the day nine comparison of the European model on the left hand side, as you can see. Euro, and this is GFS. See it right there. And look at where both models have the southeast ridge. Both models are dropping the enormous trough here both models show a massive negative epo a massive negative wpo and they both have a very strong positive arctic oscillation very strong agreement day nine really very nice to see now this is the european operational european 10 days out the southeast ridge has gotten flat as we can see We're developing a little bit of a 50 50 low in eastern canada there kind of maybe and there's our uh getting a negative well neutral nao and we can see the huge trough in the western united states this is feature number um one and that's feature number two. This is the upper level feed. This is going to go through, and then this one's going to swing through. So, and this is the European model here for day 10 on December 8th. And we can clearly see there's some sort of front situated right here. You can see it like this some sort of front. Maybe it's down here along the low, and there's the massive Arctic high, and you can see the bitter cold air. Interestingly enough, the cold air is, you notice what's happening here. The cold air is not spreading this way, it's spreading this way. OK, that's an important feature. And you can see this is the European Ensemble Day 10. And again, what's happening here, December 9th, clearly there's some sort of front here. Look, we have a high over here. Some sort of front is here, and there's some sort of overrunning developing. Now, this is the European for the morning of December 8th. And you can see these temperatures. Look at this stuff. Minus 30 up in here, minus 20, sub-zero in the plains, the Midwest. Now, look at the front. You can clearly see the front of December 8th. Uh, the sun is coming right through like this way. You can clearly see it just like that. It's already gone through New England. Richmond's 39, 40. But look at the cold air in West Virginia already coming down the other side of the Appalachian. So the front comes in December 8th, no doubt about it, based upon the data. This is the huge upper air display for December 8th and 9th. Look at this cold blast. Wow, very impressive. Now, this is the Canadian model, and it's showing actually – 
this actually has a pretty good looking snowstorm map, if the truth be told here. Uh, we don't have a negative uh, Arctic oscillation, but we do have a, uh, you know, the NAO is trying to build in here a little bit. We have a 50-50 low there. We have a southwest low here. Nice ridge on the west coast. That's not a bad looking map, but this feature moves through and then this feature comes in behind it. Okay, these two features are separate. They don't phase. They don't phase. They don't phase. That's important because, well, we'll see why. Now, this is the GFS for 240 hours out. And again, what's happening here is that um, we have two separate features in the jet stream. This one and then this one. They don't phase. They don't phase. Got it? Okay, good. Because one of the models is going to phase them. And that's going to really get me upset. Now, this is 300 hours out, uh, valid for December 11th. Here, we see the uh, this feature is still hanging back here, and we have a, a front running like this. And obviously, any sort of low pressure that develops here is going to go straight east or east-northeast. It can't go northeast. Look at the flow. The flow is doing this. So this low cannot go into the Midwest. It can't go up to New England. It's got to stay south, if that pattern is correct, and I believe it will be. And this is the GFS Ensemble. Actually, this is the overrunning developing here on December 11th into the 12th, and December 12th as well. You can see it right there. Okay? Now, that's a lot of snow and a lot of ice. That's what that is. This is a lot of cold air, folks. Now, it should be obvious from this type of pattern that there's going to be no major wave development. We're not looking at a big low coming out of the southwest. Overrunning, waves with low pressure, a lot of cold air to the north. Okay. Along comes the 6Z GFS with this sort of BS. Okay. The first wave is up off of Cape Cod. That's crap. And this, we just showed you why that's not correct. And, this, and then the second wave has another big storm here for... Um, December uh, 12th. That's crap as well. Come on. This, and let me show you why. Because if you compare the two models, you see massive changes. These are just six hours apart, folks. You shouldn't be seeing this sort of thing. Here, again, we can see no phasing between these two features. Here, the GFS phases it. Look at the change here, and look at the change here. And then look at this, and look at the... Come on. That's ridiculous. Man, why do they do that? It's just... <sighs> And only the GFS does that. No one of the other models don't do that. And then at 300 hours out again, look at the massive changes here. You remember that feature that was hanging back here? Now the GFS has a big, huge phase system in the Midwest going to the East Coast. And then look at the big changes here and here. Totally different pattern. Oh, so there you go. Now, if you look at the GFS Ensemble, this is the 6Z GFS Ensemble, folks. Okay. So want to see if that 6Z, the, this is the Ensemble of this. And what does it show? It doesn't show that. Look where all the precip is. Down here. Okay, a lot of cold air, but you can see it. Overrunning, overrunning. Right here is the front, okay? And then this is the 6Z later on. Same sort of thing. Again, look, 6Z. Oh, come on, marker. 6Z, you can see right there. There's the 6Z run. Okay, here's the heavy precip. There's the cold air. It's overrunning. It's snow and ice is what it is. So, and then if we look at the European here, this is at uh, 264 hours out from this morning. Uh, we can see that the uh, the southwest system has now moved towards the Plain States a little bit. The southeast ridge is there. So this is arguing on the European as well that there's going to be some sort of significant overrunning event. This is now valid for December 9th. You remember this feature that was back in here? It's now here. And another one is here. Okay. So we clear out the map and see what the European is showing. These are our temperatures for December 10th. We can see it's well below freezing in Virginia and western and central North Carolina. We can see that. And this is the first overrunning. This is the European Ensemble and Control Run. We can see a major snow and ice event in Virginia, West Virginia, Kentucky, moving into Maryland on, on the morning of December 9th into the 10th. And then again on the 12th and the 13th, another one. And notice these systems are doing this, folks. They're doing this. You don't see anything up here. <laughs> That's GFS crap. We don't do that, the European. We get it right. And then we look at the ensemble 336 hours out. Again, this is when that second event comes by. Look at the cold air is even further south. All of Virginia is deeply frozen at this point. So, uh, again, because the cold air is to the north. So that's also quite impressive. And then finally, 360 hours out, the, uh, the, the patterns begin to change a little bit. We're getting something developing in the Gulf of Alaska, but the flow is still deep and it's still cold, and it still looks like it holds on. We still have a little bit of southeast ridge, and there may even be something at, uh, on December 13th and 14th with this next short wave in the middle portion of the country. Anyway, that's this week in weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT. Hopefully you learned something. I'll talk to you soon.